have the last word, and we'll go to her now. The Honourable Member for North Island, Powell River. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and of course, I'm always happy to have the last word. Uh, I want to take these last few minutes to talk about veterans in this budget. There are over 15,000 veterans waiting for their disability claims to be processed. Last year, we know that the Parliamentary Budget Officer did an in-depth review of this wait time, and I want to be clear, it's up to two years for some of our veterans. The feedback was very simple. The just over 300 people that VAC has hired temporarily need to be put in place permanently. And that to address this backlog, even more need to be hired very rapidly. We're already behind. With the government opposing the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report, I'm not sure when these veterans are actually going to see the resources that they rightly deserve delivered to them. The budget does list the $29 million for VAC to hire permanent caseworkers, but this is a re-announcement of money set aside in budget 218 or 2018. So now we have the budget offering veterans yet another program to fill in the gap. The veterans I hear from are very, very clear. They're tired of new programs. What they want is simple, one caseworker that stays with them. They want to call that one person who knows their file, that understands the situation, understands their family and what situation they're in, so that they don't have to keep repeating themselves, starting over from the beginning. This budget provides $140 million for this program to fill in the gap. But I have a lot of questions, Mr. Speaker. Will this new program simply be available to everyone who is stuck on the backlog of the disability claim? If VAC can do that, why can't they just approve the original claim and make the actual resources available instead of another patchwork program? Or are we going to just see another program that has to be applied for and takes a really long time to process and people are on another list waiting? Another important gap in this budget is there was absolutely nothing to deal with the marriage after 60 clause. The gold digger clause was created in the early 1900s to prevent women from marrying older veterans and getting their pensions when they died. Mr. Speaker, the reality is this has always been unfair and very sexist. Many veterans live well into their 80s or more and their loving partners care for them. I think most Canadians support love when it happens and we should respect that. So we now know that some veterans are living in poverty because they married after 60 and are giving up their current part of their current pension to put aside for the future. Why are we punishing veterans for getting married at any age? And I want to remind everyone in this house that the RCMP are included in this. Recently, I spoke with the RCMP's Veterans Association and heard loud and clear, this issue is urgent and it needs to be dealt with now. So I hope that this gets on the order paper for the minister very quickly. And I want to thank you for allowing me these very few minutes to talk about how underserved our veterans are and how this government needs to do so much better. Thank you.